Hello and welcome to CMC Markets on Thursday the 16th of November and this quick preview of the week beginning the 20th of November. Now the key major events for this coming week are twofold. We have the UK autumn budget which is on Wednesday at 12.30 and we've also got the latest Federal Reserve minutes from the, um, the November meeting. Now while the Fed minutes aren't likely to throw up too much in the way of surprises I think the UK budget could give some sort of indication as to the government spending plans over the course of the next few months against the backdrop of a slightly weakening economy. Before we get on to that, I'm going to have a quick look at some of the market um, behaviour, particularly in stock markets over the course of the last few days. And what we've seen, I think, is a little bit of equity market weakness start, starting to exhibit itself um, in a lot of the major indices. If we start with the Germany 30, the DAX 30, um, we're on course for potentially the second, its second weekly decline in a row. And I think what's particularly interesting about this particular chart, ladies and gentlemen, is the fact that we've seen a, signif a significant bearish reversal last week. And there's a distinct prospect that we could see a potentially second negative week this week as well. What's important about this particular market is that we've seen a bearish weekly reversal or a key reversal day. Now typically that tends to happen at the end of a very long uptrends and acts as a warning that maybe we could be in line for a little bit of profit taking. So I'll be paying particular attention in this instance to this support level here. It's around about 12,875, 12,870. You can round it up or round it down however you see fit. But I think if we do break below that, that particular level, which also coincides with the summer highs, then we could see, I think, a significant correction lower. You could also argue that this is potentially a weak left shoulder, quite a nice big head here. So we could start to form a little bit of a right shoulder here on the right hand side. At the moment, um, we are looking as if we could get a little bit of consolidation above 12,875. So we'll I'll be paying particular attention to that. Also, if we look at the Euro stocks 50, again, that is displaying similar characteristics. Again, it's found support um, around about the July and August highs, slightly later than was the case with respect to the DAX. But more importantly, I think if we look at the weekly chart, again, it's showing a similar sort of reversal pattern in the context of the weekly candle. A bearish engulfing week, which typically tends to be a negative signal. And ultimately, in the case of this particular chart, the Eurostox 50, I'll be looking for that three and a half thousand area on, on the support level to potentially act as a significant arbiter of whether or not we rally off that level or start to break below it, break below the 200 day moving average on this particular chart and trend lower. We've also been seeing a little bit of weakness in the Nikkei 225. So I think if we watch the DAX and we watch the Nikkei 225 in conjunction with each other, for indications of whether or not we might start to see a little bit of a breakdown, a little bit of profit taking as we head into the end of November and potentially year end. Because if you actually look at where we were at the beginning of the year, where we are now, we're still in excess of 12 to 15 percent up on the year for both of these indices. And if you're a portfolio manager, I think if you're looking to take a little bit of money off the table, now is potentially probably the best time to do it. Seeing a little bit of a bullish reversal here, so we may get a little bit of a pullback on the Nikkei 225 but if these charts are any indication and, and the way that this is looking there's we could potentially have seen the, the peaks in the very short term on the DAX and the Nikkei 225. Brings me on to this week's key events obviously I talked about the UK budget the UK autumn budget at the beginning of this video I think this is going to be the key um, this is going to be the key market event for this week obviously along with the FOMC minutes. But I think what's going to be particularly interesting is what the Office of Budget Responsibility does with respect to its GDP forecasts for not only this year, but next year as well. Now in March, the OBR had a, had a GDP forecast for this year of 2%. It's quite likely they're going to have to bring that down in line with the Bank of England's GDP forecast of 1.7 and the EU's GDP forecast of around about 1.5. I think what we can I think um, I, th I think what we can say is GDP for the UK in 2017 is likely to come in between 1.5 and 1.7 percent. So I, I don't expect to see any surprises there. The inflation forecast again, that's probably something to keep a very close 
eye on as as we as we look at um, what the office budget responsibilities forecasts are for the economy. But I think the main focus will be on what the Chancellor has to say with respect to what he plans to do to try and support the economy in what is likely to be a very, very difficult period. Now, there's been an awful lot of, uh, he's come under an awful lot of pressure to make some significant changes. Obviously, business rates is one area which the Chancellor could focus on. Small businesses have been complaining about the um, onerous effects of some of the increases in small business rates. So we could see him um, take some measures there. He's also coming under pressure to scrap the public sector pay cap. So again, we could see um, some market reaction to that in terms of the gilt market. If he starts to loosen the strings, loosen the purse strings, maybe more than perhaps the market thinks is wise. He could also look at the housing market, look at potential measures with respect to stamp duty, which I think now is starting to act as a significant inhibitor for first time buyers in getting their foot on the housing ladder. But I think more importantly, I think there will be we'll be looking for action, I think, on planning regulations, because ultimately, I think that's where the logjam is, is really, I think that's where the major logjam is. So if we could see some form of relaxation of planning regulations, that could be a significant boon to the house building sector, um, which has taken a little bit of a hit in recent days. In, in the in the in the round, I think in terms of the effect on on the pound, um, we are still in this uptrend that we've been in since um, the beginning of the year. As we can see, at the beginning of 2017, we're trading around about 120. We're now around about 132, trading in a little bit of a sideways consolidation with solid support at around about 130.30, as we can see from this chart here. It's also where the 100-day moving average is. Um, but there's also decent resistance around about 130, two and a half, 133. I don't really expect that to change too much. I don't expect to see too much downside. I don't really expect to see too much in the way of upside. I think in terms of the euro sterling, that could be where, that could be where we could see some moves because we also have flash PMI. We have the latest PMIs um, from France and Germany from the manufacturing sectors, and these will be early indications for um, the, these were the final indications for October um, and we, we found from the October numbers there was a slight moderation from the Q3 numbers which were very very good and it'll be interesting to see whether the flash November numbers which are due out um, during the week whether or not there's further moderation there but again what we've got here with respect to euro sterling um, significant resistance above 90 we can see that from here we can see that from these two peaks here and we can see it once again here in the November peak that we saw earlier this week but we also have fairly decent support in and around 88 and a half um, and and the 88 level but I think it's going to take something significant to really push through 90 and I would I, would, I think given the, the length of this upper shadow here this 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 star doji um, we're probably likely to see um, a little bit of a drift back down towards the range lows of earlier in the month also got the Fed minutes. Um, not really expecting too much from those. I think the, the the minutes could acknowledge the disruptions from the hurricanes and the start of the balance sheet reduction. Will they give an insight into the mindset of Fed officials as to how the US economy is doing? Will they add any weight to the fact that we're pretty much nailed on to get a Fed rate hike in December? I don't think they're really going to add that too much to the overall assessment of where the US dollar is going and certainly in the context of where um, the US dollar is going against the yen, we're still pretty much in a range and likely to remain so for quite some time. So that's it for this week. Thanks very much for listening. It's Michael Houston talking to you from CMC Markets.